Hello everybody and welcome back to more Arpos Plays Europa Universalis 4. This time as Jian Shao in the new expansion Mandate of Heaven and we are gonna try to form the King Dynasty or the Qing Dynasty or whatever you call it, the one with the Q in the beginning. Uh, there are a bunch of new features, one we're getting to see already. Ming wants us to become a tributary state. I am going to accept this. I did a trial run or tried to play this beforehand. Not becoming a tributary is not smart. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it that way. Uh, this might be the solution because honestly everyone else will join us and then we can't attack them uh, because they'll just be protected by Ming. So if we want to do some kind of expansion we kind of need to join under them. Also this gives us some basic protection. It means we have to pay money. Uh, does it show here how much we're paying to Ming? It doesn't seem like it. Maybe they'll demand every year or something like that. They demand that we send them two ducats. Uh, increase trust by one. Yeah, sure, whatever. Two ducats, that's fine. Couldn't care less about that. Let's start by sending some ships, because honestly, that's always what I started doing, but I think it's important here. None of these are really that good. We can keep the barks, because barks are always awesome. You know I love my barks, but the other stuff, meh. It's mediocre at best. I mean, we're not gonna do much fighting at sea. We might attack the Japanese eventually, but our main goal is going to be to unite the Jurchen tribes, which, by the way, we should take that mission uh, to get some claims. Should unite the Jurchen tribes, and then we should just go after Ming and potentially Korea, but... Yeah, Japan is going to be a later project that's going to come when we're already created a Qing Dynasty. So one of the major features that we're going to play around with, with a lot is the Mandate of Heaven, Empire of China thing. Currently the Emperor is Qichen Chu of the Ming Dynasty, uh, which is kind of predictable. I mean, that's how the game starts, right? So it's, it's very predictable. Um, but eventually we're going to be able to bring that down, hopefully, and our goal is to become, a, become the Emperor, Emperor of China ourselves uh, as the Qing Dynasty. So that should be our goal. We can also um, announce edicts or create edicts for provinces. We can announced golden ages. We're not going to be able to play around much with this because honestly we don't we can't fulfill any of these. Maybe later on for the age of reformation and so on we won't be able to fulfill a few of them but for the age of discovery none of these are very likely. Um, I mean he made it rival sure but <laughs> that's like that's a very small part of it so hopefully Ming will want to buy some ships from us. Let's see yeah for 10 ducats not for 20 obviously but that was predictable. So we're slowly gonna start selling these off, gonna start pawning those off. So is there anyone we can actually ally? Oira, do you want to become my pal? I'm not expecting Ming to be happy about that. We could ally Korchin, they're a horde. I don't think I need any of their stuff to unite the Jurchen tribes. So that might be a good choice. Currently Haixi and they are at war, but they are tributary. If I attack them, will Ming join? Ming won't join because we're both tributaries, that's, that's perfect. Alright. Ixi, Ixi, they have third. They have a bunch of troops, though. They have a lot of units. Man, Ixi is a lot more powerful than I thought they were. They have a lot less force limit than we do, but that doesn't seem to matter much. They're crushing Yeren right now. Ming has also attacked Korchin, which is my ally, or was supposed to be my ally. I guess that never quite went through. All right, that might have been a good thing that we didn't ally them, <laughs> actually. Uh, I don't even know if I sent it. Did I send it? Maybe I did, and then it would have been weird. Now I can't even sell these ships anymore because Ming will accept it, but that would be a good way to to pawn off for some money. We're currently losing a lot of money, but that's kind of predictable. I'm gonna bring down the bring down the maintenance of the ships meanwhile, because Haixi doesn't really have any ships, so what's the point? How's our army looking? We have three cavalry regiments, so 3k cavalry, which is almost optimal. You want to have about four. But they're very expensive as well. Also, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good army. This attack, because I don't think we can wait much longer, especially if they start annexing Yeren provinces. Are these better? Tribal feud, 25% aggressive expansion, 100 prestige, 100 cost, versus 100 aggressive expansions. These are actually better. These are actually a lot better. All provinces. I can only take all provinces if I do that, but screw it. I think that's just better. Put it on Girin, because that's gonna be the most likely one we're gonna be able to take. I'd rather have less aggressive expansion, obviously. So is that a thing? Confirm yearly tribute, yes, yeah, sure. Send them two, on two military points, that's fine. 
horrible <laughs> unsure opinion of Ming minus 50. Well, whatever. I dislike them. I like them less, but they still like me, and that's the most important part. I'm actually going to improve relations with them for right now. I don't want them to attack me, so... For right now, it's important to stay safe. They have really good mandate growth, and as long as it's above 50, they're going to be in a good position. They get less natural rest, they get stability mod modifier and everything like that, but... I don't want to lose horde, mo horde unity. Stability... Uh, I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to lose more the unity, but that does suck. We're gonna get more once we start looting and racing stuff. But I'd rather not lose than race the province that I'm about to take. We'll have to see. Not that many tributaries, le tributaries yet. I saw them lost save when I tried to play this. They get a lot more tributaries than this, but... Yeah, they're, uh, they're already gaining. So as long as they're above 50 and they're still gaining, they're probably gonna be in a fairly stable position. I can see that's 8k back. They're still running into Yeren, they're just ignoring me. I wanna capture this first of all. I think that's the only fort, from what it seems like. Garrison zero, zero, zero. Yeah, so this is their only fort. So once we're taking this, we should be in a very good spot. Ming like, come on guys. <laughs> You're both my pals, why do you have to fight? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, okay, well, we're gonna have to think about this. You're not at war anymore, Ming, that's good. Please buy my ships. I'm at war, so I can't sell them, damn it. Okay, well, this is gonna suck. They're also tributaries, so Ming, of course, didn't join Korchin. I hope that Yeren can somehow buy me time, because I'm forced to fight both of them. I think I might be mostly screwed. Can I... Where's the race war taxes? There it is. Race war taxes. I'm still losing money, but I'm losing a bit less. Hmm, 17k, what's there? 0, 2, 0, 1. And this is a forge. If I go in there, I will get the benefit. It's mountainous province. This is perfect. All right. Oh, but they're moving back now. Okay. Uh, this is woods. Okay, so let's try to fight off these army first. 9k. As long as they don't come and help, we should be in a good spot. Yeah, we should crush this army. Perfect. All right, and this fort is still going. Perfect, hardy warrior. So as I said, this this province is still the siege is still going. So as long as they're sieging that and it's a mountainous province, we should get the defensive bonus, especially since we have extra man maneuver on our commander. We should win this fight. We should win this fight. Will we? Yeah, we will. All right, we win this fight. Now that's a good start, <laughs> but I'm not sure it's actually gonna be good enough. They have the Gang CA province. That was also probably a horrible butchering of the pronunciation there, but have to do. We can take basically all of this, but eh, actually, let's just try to take all of it and then attack Korea and then see what we can do with Korea. Korea is our rival, are they not? I believe we rivaled them. Uh, view your nation. We have not rivaled them. I wasn't able to do that on time. That's pretty stupid of me. I want to force out Haixi as soon as possible. They still won't accept this, but if I crush that army, they probably will. Is that a mountainous province? Something that's a mountainous province. But they will finish the siege before we get there, so not worth it to really run over. Is this also a mountainous province? Okay, let's just finish this siege, try to run over and try to catch them on top of one of the mountainous provinces. We should be able to just smash this army, and then we can deal with Korea on their own. Still losing money though. Ooh, I would have liked to have been able to save, sell the ships. I probably should have rivaled Korea first, because then I could have Done a bit more, a bit more, been a bit more efficient about this, but still, the Korean army, not very efficient. Okay, that's a mountainous province, we should smash this army as well. We actually got the crossing penalty here, which is pretty scary. Is it just because they have better maneuver? No, they have the same maneuver. We were, it's our province, so I'm not quite sure why that happened. We're gonna have to run back and get manpower back for a bit here. Come on, AXE. Force you out. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to just not take that province. That's fine. Okay. Okay, now we run. Now we run. Okay. <laughs> this was huge. This was massive. There's a lot of new provinces to deal with. Okay, let's just take the easy ones first. And these ones are just gonna have to wait. I would love to just be able to get out of this war scot free. Korea is gonna be hell to deal with. Let's just put it that way. We should start making a bit more money. We should probably raise a few of those provinces. Hopefully we can raise the Korean province instead. 
Uh, 2k over there, 6k over there. Hopefully we can, you know, force them to run. Actually, we're, we're doing quite well because this is able to locate, which is giving us a bit of force, a bit of war score. Still not willing to go free from this. We should be able to go in and smash that, but I'm not sure I want to. I'm gonna start in the. I'm gonna start freeing this province first of all. We should still be able to win a battle on top of this province because it's being mountainous and all that kind of stuff. But still, I'm not sure it's it's the best course of action. Probably better ways to do this. Core creation cost minus five percent. I'm gonna take that. It's gonna oh, it's gonna decrease our national tax modifier though and cost some money. Or just regular prestige. Only 5% core creation cost. I would usually love that, but only 5%? Nah, you know what? I'm gonna let that go. I don't think 5% is worth it. So this is <laughs> this is an action-packed first episode. Uh, 19k. They have 19k in total. This province is still not occupied. They're stuck over there. We're gonna get in there with 19k against 17. <sighs> yes, we got... Yeah, perfect. Alright, we're gonna win this battle again. We're really being saved by the fact that, like, every single province we have is mountainous. <laughs> that's the only reason we're still alive. I'm gonna free that province first of all. Still losing money, though, and that's a huge concern. Stuff some, we could declare bankruptcy, but I'm not gonna do that. Repay loan. We have one loan currently, which isn't a huge deal, but... It's still problematic. If I start raising provinces, I'll probably do better. But where can you raise them? You raise them over there, right? Yeah. Only non-core provinces that I own, yeah, that's fine. Actually, can't I raise some of these? Raise. Will give me 20, 20, 20, and 9. As well as 4, four horde unity. Their relation with that. Okay, so I, I should probably just do it on not my provinces. I applied hordes before, since they introduced racing, which was in Cossacks. Oh shit, my, oh, shit, my province is... Oh, fuck my ships. Oh, I didn't want those ships anyways. <laughs> I didn't want those ships anyways. Yeah, I've, I've played since they introduced that, but I haven't really played much with Hordes. I played it with Tim Raids once, and I did some raiding. But, not quite like this. Let's start off by raising that one. We're making money again, which is good. Spells of War plus 3. So if we can keep just abusing Spells of War, we could be able to do something here. That you own and control. Okay, right. So we can't really do it that way. We're gonna have to raise... Low in development by three. Can I do them like a shitty province with no development? So it doesn't really matter. None of these are that bad. Five. If I do it, we'll go down by two. And I won't really get much from it. Two horde unity. Oh, I, want, I need to do that. How else can I make the horde unity go up? Increase by looting and raising provinces. I mean, I kind of have to, I guess. It's like cutting into my province power a lot, but it's kind of just gonna have to be. Two point minus two per year. Altruka. Let's bring it up as far as possible. Okay, it's up to up to ninety three now. I would have loved to be able to take provinces from from Korea. I don't think it's very likely to be to happen. Honestly, they just have too much, and we already took a bunch from Aixi, so doing that will probably be too cost costly. Also, I probably shouldn't have done it on provinces that I already started coring, because I've paid for them to core them. So I probably could have paid less if I just raised them first. Gear in, raise. There's a bunch of... Lowering his development by 6. <sighs> I don't want to do that. We already brought up the, the Horde Unity enough. Honestly, that's enough. Haix has one province left. They're still occupying a bunch of Yeren troops. But I think Yeren should be able to fight back. Although they're also at war with Korchin right now. This is a cluster fucking Manchu area. This is a very clusterfucky Munch area. Like, everyone is at war with everyone. Even Korea decided to get in on the fun, and they're not even a Munch tribe. Do we send you guys into harbor? Because the, you can't beat the uh, Korean navy right now. Wait, why? Oh yeah, that's not even my harbor. What the hell am I thinking? Uh, usually when I play in this part of the world, I play, in, I play Korea, because I find they have a really good starting ruler and stuff. So it's pretty fun to play. So I'm I'm used to just walking into the Korean harbor. Zero percent under. So I mean they're still sieging this one. Once again, a mountainous province. So if we just keep fighting their army on this one, we should be fine. We're losing money again, but that's that's fine. We have a lot right now. 
Oh, you're up. Oh, yeah, I'm improving the lessons with them. How do Ming think of me? They still like me. I'm gonna keep improving relations with them a bit further. So that they don't start flipping on me. There's also one thing I want to point out. This is like a little bit further into the episode than perhaps I should have waited to say this. But if you're still watching and you're enjoying the Georgia series, I could still let that one go. By like ru rolling back the patch. And, the, and playing without the current expansion, every single time I go back to play Georgia. Uh, it will be, like, annoying to do, but I could do that. The alternative is me starting over again, playing another Georgia series. With the current expansion and stuff. That feels kind of uh, kind of stupid as well, because I just started over al already, you know, a few weeks ago. So, I don't know, it depends on what you guys would rather do. I'm gonna wait until I've gotten some comment that tell me if you want me to you start over, or keep going, but on the old expansion, so, and then we'll see what the right choice should be. Turn territory into state, yes, we wanna do that. Raise banners, we can do that, but this is core at first. View edicts, we can... Local manpower modifier, local missionary strength, local trade power. Monthly autonomy change. Increase state maintenance, it will cost a bunch more though, we... I don't know if we can afford Edicts right now, we're already paying a lot of money. I think Edicts seems to be one of those things that makes sense to do when you're paying a lot of money. And when you have a lot of money, but we don't really. We should get there before they finish the siege, finish the siege hopefully. We're completely out of manpower, so we kind of need to finish, the, finish this war now. We got them one of their forts, which is pretty big. Alright, we should win this battle easily. I'm pretty sure they are also out of manpower, or they should be anyways. So if we finish this battle and we're gonna win it, then we should still end up winning this. Hopefully we can smash them. I'm gonna try to s see if we can go down there and just stack wipe their army. Hopefully that will give us enough war score to peace out. My plan is not to take too much. Because honestly I'm not sure we can afford it without just everyone hating us. But at the same time it would be nice. I hate how quickly Horde Unity goes down. I think it goes down quicker the more development you have as well. So it's, it's a weird little interaction. Okay, we weren't quite able to stack wipe it, but hopefully we can soon. 35% war score. If we take that, we can take that. We can. Hmm, we could take a bunch of provinces here. Hmm, should we do it? War operations. Bunch of money. We can't take that much. Okay. How much can we take? We can take 18 ducats. Honestly, I'm okay with that. Because I, I can't be at war any longer. It's cost too much. House or revolts? Oh god, there's a lot of revolts. I'm gonna consolidate for right now because we can't afford to pay re reinforcements. Let's start by picking one of these two rays. We can't raise the one, it's too bad probably. We can raise this one. Give us two horde unity. Raising this one will give us three horde unity. Can't raise that one. Okay, so raise the two we can raise because both of them will bring us up a little bit further. 94 Horde Unity again. Still losing a lot of money. We got a bit more. To start coring these. Still the gear in one is just gonna be a while until we're able to core. The last one we need to, f to unite the Jurchen tribes is... Hingan. Hingan, which I believe is in... Yeah, it's up there. So that shouldn't be too difficult to manage to do. Honestly. We should be able to do it eventually, but for right now we need to just stay safe. I'm not gonna go to war for a little bit longer, but either way, I think that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Uh, a little bit of a weird first episode with a lot of wars, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you want, you can follow me on Twitter, at EasyArpos. You can also subscribe to the channel, and you will see when the next video goes live. So, thanks for watching, and bye.